Today we are reading Chapter 5 in Faith Roots, Nicole Parker's first book in the series of Tales of the Exodus, with her permission, and it's illustrated by Abel Arabido Torres. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the stories in the Bible that give us encouragement and strength in the things we're facing today. Please send your Holy Spirit to put your words in my mouth so that when the kids listen to this recording, they can be encouraged and strengthened in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oops. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not their own. And they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward they shall come out with great substance. Genesis 15, 13, and 14, they shall come out with great substance. All right, let's recite our memory verse. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good land and a large land into a land flowing with milk and honey exodus 3 7 and 8 i love this promise and it makes me think of god's promise for us that he's preparing us a place in heaven so welcome how do we soak in god's promises Let's look it up in Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, verse 17. Anybody want to look that up for me? If not, I will read it. Romans 10, verse 17. Romans 10, 17. I can read it. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Very good. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Wow, thank you for reading that for me. So what does that mean to you? We draw our faith. From the word of God. So the more we hear it, we read it, we hear it, our faith grows. Yes, that's so true. Thank you so much. Hold on a second. My dog keeps running in. <laughs> she's a rescue and she's very anxious. The other one's very trusting because we've had her since she was little. <laughs> But she's learning. So do you have a testimony of how of how God's worked in your life or grown your faith? It can be little or big or small or any size. Um Yeah, we just I just thank God for life and uh as surely the word of God is it's is true, and if you hold on to the promises, He's definitely going to see you through. Um, one thing I've been doing personally, it's just holding on to the promises in the word of God, and it has been really been helping me with challenges in life. Um, just recently, I actually, I'll share this testimony. Recently, I did get a very big check in the mail, and I wasn't expecting it. And I just knew that it was God doing it. It was from a, a student loan that I had that I paid off. And they sent me all the money back. 
and I just, and they sent me all the money back. Yeah, uh, they said they realized that um, I filed for bankruptcy years ago and they just noticed it that I, I wasn't supposed to pay that student loan. So they gave me all the money back and all the interest that I paid and it was more than what um, the, I actually borrowed from them. And I just knew it was just God and it came at the right time that I needed it. So I praise God for that. That's beautiful. I love the way God does that. He sends us things just when we need it, not a moment early and not a moment late. Thank you so much for sharing your testimony. And this week I, I sent it on the email, but I was so shocked because, well, I was, actually it was last week. I got the bill from Zoom. <laughs> actually they just took it out of my account I didn't know I was set up that way and it was my grocery money and I started to panic and I said no I have been teaching the children my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory so I prayed and I thank God I said I need to buy groceries tomorrow so I'm thanking you that you're going to work this out I'm not going to stress over it so I prayed and I cleaned the promise and that evening um, my one of my prayer partners said I just went grocery shopping and this man bought my groceries. <laughs> she said, I had money, but my, my bank wouldn't let it, you know, she was in a different town. And so it thought somebody had stolen her card and she was so frustrated. And the man's like, I'll pay for your bill. And she was like, no, you can't do that. And he was like, I did it. <laughs> and she was like, I'm going to send you that money. And I was just shocked. And Praise it, God. <laughs> it was what I needed. So I was like, wow, God is so good. <laughs> He so, is, yeah. So, so let's read chapter six and soaking in the promises. What's the greatest miracle, Papa? Zara asked, bounding to Papa's side as soon as he came in the door that evening. Papa picked her up and swung her in the air. What great miracle, my dear? He grinned, setting her down and kissing Mama hello. Oh, it smells good in here. What's for supper? Corn and rice porridge with raisins and nuts. Nothing too special, Mama smiled, dipping steaming mush into bowl. But I did sprinkle a little cardamom and some coriander from the garden. The miracle you promised to tell us about last night before we went to bed. Sarah pursed her lips in a pretend pout. You forgot. Papa laughed. I'll tell you right after supper. Mama will still be weaving her basket tonight, and I want to help her. We can catch up on the evenings, on the events of the day while we eat. Nothing special happened today as far as I know, though. Soon the family was settled again on mats on the floor, where they had been the night before. Mama picked up where she had left off, smoothly weaving the strands of her basket again. Heart change is always the greatest miracle, Papa began. The miracle that will happen when we finish Joseph's story by taking his bones to Canaan, when we are finally free, is not as wonderful as the miracle of Yahweh helping him forgive his brothers. That is the miracle I was talking about last night. What do you mean? Asher asked. Think of how Joseph responded after his brothers sold him. It was different from how Moses reacted to the Egyptian beating the slaves, wasn't it? Joseph spent many years in slavery because of his brother's cruelty towards him. But what did he do when his brothers were finally under his power? Did he kill them and make them slaves as they deserved? Asher looked down at the hard dirt floor. No, I guess not. He did just the opposite. Papa gathered a handful of dry bulrushes, bulrush leaves and dipped them in the bowl of water. He turned the leaves over and submerged them again, thoroughly, carefully tucking the ends in so that every leaf was fully immersed. Joseph showed the power of forgiveness which will always be more powerful than getting even. But his brothers were sorry, so everything was resolved, Asher protested. Of course he forgave them. It's easy to forgive when people are sorry and pay 
the pain is over. Forgiveness does not pretend that the bad thing did not happen. Joseph was still suffering from what they did, even when he forgave them. Papa reminded him. He had lost many years with his beloved father, years he could never get back. He did not even know at first if his father would live long enough to see him again. In fact, he added, Joseph wasn't even sure yet if they were sorry. When he forgave them and he suffered to the painful consequences of his brother's sin for the rest of his life, he never returned to live on the land his father had given him in Canaan. His heart was wrapped up in the promise of Yahweh to Abraham, the promise that the land of Canaan would belong to Abraham's family someday. That's why Joseph was so determined not to be buried in Egypt. The promise was passed on to Isaac, to Jacob, and then to Joseph and his brothers. Joseph was only 17 when he was stolen away as a slave and taken to Egypt. But already before that time, his life had been powerfully shaped by faith in that promise. I want you to look at these leaves, Asher, said Mama abruptly, pulling a handful of soggy leaves from the bottom of the bowl of water. They've been soaking since yesterday, getting soft, so I could weave them together in, in my basket. How are they different from the dry leaves that Papa just put in the bowl? Asher examined the soaked leaves. They're heavy, for one thing. The ones Papa just put in the water are light. He lifted a dry leaf from the pile, floating on top of the water. These feel like papyrus pipe, paper, but the ones that have been soaking a long time feel more like rags. They're soft and easy to bend. Why do you think we soak the leaves, Mama asked. I know, Zara offered. If we don't soak them before we start weaving them into the basket, they'll tear and break easily. That's right, Mama said. I'm glad to see you have been listening to the things I am teaching you. She reached over to put Zara's, pat Zara's hair, then laughed as water from her hand dripped down onto Zara's upturned nose. The ones that were just put in the water are still fragile. If I tried to weave them when they were dry, they would crack and ruin the basket. Mama pulled a soft soap leaf from the bundle and then returned the rest to the bowl, stopping to push the wad of dry leaves under the water again. Soap leaves are like people who have learned to trust that Yahweh is good. They soak their hearts in his promises. When bad things happen to them, their faith is stretched and twisted, but their connection with him does not break. They continue to believe that Yahweh is powerful enough and loving enough to bring good out of bad. They know that he will make all things right in the end. She paused for a moment. Evaluating how to carefully insert a new leaf so the strand she was weaving into the basket would not be interrupted. They trust Yahweh's love. They have faith that the justice and mercy of Yahweh's character will always be perfectly balanced for every situation. Joseph had soaked his heart in the promises of Yahweh before he was taken to Egypt. Papa continued, he was soft and ready to be molded. Because of his faith in the promises, Yahweh could bend and shape him into the great man of faith he needed to become. And he was also able to forgive his brothers, even before they were sorry. Because he knew Yahweh would make things right in the end. Look at this dry leaf, Mama said pausing in her weaving to pick up a leaf from the floor. If I put pressure on it, she said, bending the leaf at an angle, see what happens? The children watched as a jagged edge cracked where the dry bulrush leaf bent. 
those who do not soak themselves in the promises of Yahweh are unable to survive difficulties. When their faith is tested, it cracks. They become bitter and angry. They often strike out in vengeance against others. They can't forgive because they think they must make everything right themselves. They can't believe that Yahweh will make all things just and fair in the end. Believing Yahweh's promises permanently changed how Joseph thought of himself. Papa added, he lived in Egypt for nearly 100 years and became Egyptian in many ways, but he forever considered Canaan his homeland because of the promises made to Abraham. Not because it was the most comfortable place he lived. I'm sure he had many bad memories from the time with his brothers in Canaan, but Joseph's heart was soaked in the promises that this land would belong to Abraham's descendants. His father Jacob had shown his faith by choosing to be buried in the land of promise. Joseph wanted to do the same. And that, he said smiling, is why Joseph showed his faith again at the very end of his life, when he commanded that his bones be taken back to Canaan. Not immediately after he died either, Mama added. Joseph could have asked as that as soon as he died, his body would be placed in the tomb beside his beloved father, Jacob. After all, Jacob's body had been taken back to be buried there shortly after his death. But no, Joseph had something more important in mind. He wanted to be sure that we, the descendants who came after, would always remember that Egypt was not our permanent home either. Mama paused to tuck a stray strand of curls behind her ear. Yahweh had promised that someday his people would go back to Canaan. Joseph asked that his bones be taken along when the promise was fulfilled. That was how he showed his faith in Yahweh's promise of our return. Asher could hear the smile in Mama's voice, even though he could not see her face in the gathering darkness. You see, even back then, hundreds of years ago, Joseph was thinking of us. And best of all, so was Yahweh. It's exciting. We know the promise end of the story already because Yahweh has spoken. And yet, the fulfillment of his promises is usually a journey rather than an event. We must soak ourselves in the promises to prepare for whatever is ahead, Mama added, like the leaves for the basket. We must trust Yahweh's love for us, no matter what happens. Life can bend us wherever it likes, and our faith will not break. And we're going to need lots of faith. I have a feeling that just like Joseph's journey of faith in the promises, our upcoming event, adventure of faith in the promises will be a difficult one too. <laughs> well, I'm about to have an adventure in faith myself, Papa said. Caleb and I are going to go along with Moses and Aaron and the other elders to see Pharaoh. I guess I will see what happens firsthand. Wow, can we go with you? Asher and Zara burst out together. I'm afraid not, Papa laughed. But pray for us, and you can be sure I will tell you all about it. And for now, it is time for bed. Mama said she stood up, placed the wet, partially woven basket on a shelf in a corner, and reached for the bowl of water and leaves. The next step in preparation for our journey of growing faith like Joseph's is probably getting a good night's sleep. Let's soak our lives in the promises by prayer and surrender tonight. That's the end of chapter 6. So think about it. Do you agree that having a change of heart is the greatest miracle? And why? I think it is. You know, um, it's really hard when somebody hurts us. 
really, really hard. I've had my heart hurt really bad a lot of times. And, uh, but you know, it's so, so helpful when we can give that to God and ask him for a new heart and a heart of forgiveness. I had someone in my life for a while who was very mean to me and tried to do everything to get me to argue. God would tell me to keep my mouth shut and to just pray for them. And, uh, and I did. And then when they accused me of all kinds of things I didn't do, it was really heartbreaking. I would cry. And I just kept praying. And God, I asked God to please give me a heart of forgiveness. I didn't want to have any bitterness or anger. And he did that for me. I knew I couldn't do it myself. But he did it. And, and that really helped me. And that person gave their heart completely to God before they died. And I know I'll get to see them again. So it was worth it. And I'm so glad for that miracle. Because I know I couldn't do it myself. So think about it. Forgiveness does not pretend that the bad thing did not happen. Can you forgive what you pretend didn't happen? It's so important to think about this, right? The fact that somebody needs to be forgiven means they did something bad. But when they do something to us, Jesus said they did it to him. So we can give it to him and he can give us that forgiveness. What injustices do, we, do you want to see made right? Think about it. And how does Romans 8.28 help us? Trust God with life when things don't go right, when it's rotten. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, verse 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know, oh, that's not <laughs> um, what we ought to pray. That's verse 26. I am so glad the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. But verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So even when bad things happen like it did to Joseph and the Israelites, God worked it out for good. And he can do that for you. And me. So think about it. When does God forgive us? When we're really good? Let's see. Romans 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. This is one of my husband's favorite verses. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, that's you and me and everyone else, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So when we were bad, when we were not nice, he still died for us because he loves us. God is a God of forgiveness and he wants to heal our hearts. I love that. Where do you get the forgiveness we need to, to give others? I didn't have any forgiveness. Where do we get that forgiveness? Let's look in Colossians 3. 12 through 13. Colossians. This is one of my favorite verses. <laughs> I really like it. Colossians 3. 12 through 13. Therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must love one another. So where do I get that love and forgiveness that I need? I get it from Jesus, right? Because before, while I was still a sinner, and I'm still a sinner, when I mess up, he forgives. 
so I can get that forgiveness from him, receive it, and then I can share that with others, and you can too. So do you have a testimony about forgiveness or how God's forgiven you or changed your heart in any way? I hope you will take the time to think about that and then share your testimony with somebody. Encourage someone with how God's forgiven you or he's loved you and helped you, helped you soak in the promises. Think about it. Share it. Encourage someone else. You can make a difference. So remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. So I hope you'll take the time to look up yummy promises, to write them down, to memorize them, to sing them, to share them, to eat them, and to listen to God's word and all the stories so that you can be encouraged in your faith and grow. So take time to eat God's word and soak in his promises. It will help you so much. It helps me a lot. I need God's promises. And take time to read the Bible. And the stories, there's so many stories in the Bible of how God helped people in all their troubles. He was faithful. And that will help you grow your faith. So I hope you'll take the time to read promises, to share them, to share your testimony. And remember the stories in the Bible. To read them and share them. And remember them. And the stories in your life. Share what God's done for you or for others. It's always good to encourage one another. That's how our faith grows. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the Bible stories and so many other stories of how you work in people's lives. We thank you for the way you work in our lives. Lord, I ask that you be with the children and their families. Help them to grow their faith by reading your word and your promises and, and the beautiful stories that you've put there and sharing that with others. Um, please give us all a heart change so that we can love others as we come to you to get everything we need and then we can give that to others. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Well, you take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.